I'm Annie Fisher, the Vice President of the American Literary Translators Association. I'm excited to open this video commemorating the shortlist and winner of the 2020 Italian Prose in Translation Award. 2020 marks the sixth year for the IPTA, which recognizes the importance of contemporary Italian prose, fiction, and literary nonfiction, and promotes the translation of Italian works into English. Welcome, everyone. We are excited to have you here to celebrate with us. The judges for the 2020 IPTA are Jean Bonner, Richard Dixon, and Tony Sugar, who selected the shortlist and the winner, who will receive a $5,000 prize. We will be hearing from Jean Bonner and Richard Dixon with the blurbs for the shortlisted titles, and then we will go to Tony Sugar for the announcement of the winner of the 2020 Italian Prose and Translation Award, followed by a brief conversation and reading with the winner. Please feel free to follow along in the awards brochure found in the description, and we encourage you to purchase these titles from the bookshop.org page, also found in the description. When you do, you support local bookstores. Engage with us in the comments wherever you're watching and tag us at Lit Translate on Twitter and use the hashtag Alta43. And now I'll turn over to our judges. Announcing the 2020 Italian Prose and Translation Award shortlist in no particular order. Beyond Babylon by Ijeba Shago, translated from the Italian by Aaron Robertson and published by Two Lines Press. Ijeba Shago's sprawling modern epic of a novel tells us the story of two half-sisters and in the process drops us into contemporary Rome, a fascinating city of immigrants and refugees. Readers may see the Eternal City and Italy through an entirely new lens, the lens of people who have escaped all kinds of tragedies, in the case of one sister, Argentina's dirty war, to remake their lives in a new place. While weaving an engrossing story, Shago, who is of Somalian descent, touches on myriad controversial issues facing Italy, and not only, including colonialism, racism, and sexism. Such a brimming polyglot novel provided no end of challenges to translator Aaron Robertson, who provides an accessible English version of Shago's witty, frank Italian. And The Bishop's Bedroom by Piero Chiara, translated from the Italian by Jill Foulston and published by New Vessel Press. In this sophisticated and at times moody murder mystery, two men meet up in post-war Northern Italy and become friends as they sail around Lake Maggiore. The author, Piero Chiara, has expertly combined what the late John Gardner considered fiction's two main storylines. A stranger comes to town and a man goes on a journey. The stranger in this case is the owner of a small sailing vessel, while the man who goes on the journey is a wealthy villa owner whose accounting of his wartime adventures in Africa doesn't quite add up. Or is that the case? Chiara keeps us guessing and reading with the combination of the stranger and the journey resulting in tragedy and heartache. The novel is eminently readable, thanks to the spare and accurate in everything from mood to diction translation by Jill Fulston, who matches Chiara's peerless knowledge of winds, tides, and other nautical concerns that pepper the narrative. Wolf's Table by Rosella Pastorino, translated from the Italian by Lea Di Ianesco, published by Flat Iron Books. Set in the final stages of World War II, this novel is inspired by the real life experience of a German woman who is conscripted to taste dishes to be served to Adolf Hitler. Rosa Sauer's parents are dead, her husband is fighting on the Eastern Front and she is sheltering with his parents when the SS come knocking at her door. She and a handful of women, her fellow food tasters, are forced to eat food that someone might have poisoned. Leah Di Ianesco well renders the intensity of the original text, capturing the drama of the women's plight, their tensions, anxieties and despair, and has a fine ear for dialogue that flows smoothly and compellingly. Ithaca Forever, Penelope Speaks, a novel by Luigi Malerba, translated from the Italian by Douglas Grant Heiss, published by University of California Press. Odysseus's return to his wife Penelope after his 20-year absence 
is masterfully retold in this intriguing novel that pries open the gaps in Homer's narrative. Did she really fail to recognize him when he appeared before her dressed as a beggar? Malherbe's interpretation highlights Odysseus's vanity and Penelope's resentment when she realizes his first interest is to test out her fidelity. He has been fighting wars and seeking adventure while hers has been a life of solitude, a marriage on hold. Douglas Grant Heiser brilliantly captures the voices of the returning victor and his emotional inadequacies and of the long suffering wife who isn't prepared to go along with his games. And this year's winner is I Am God by Giacomo Sartori. Translated from the Italian by Frederica Randall, Restless Books. God has an existential crisis and falls in love with the unlikeliest of humans. Why, he asks, with nine billion to look after, should I go for a geneticist who also happens to be a fanatical atheist? Being all powerful is losing its appeal, but would life as a mortal be any better? Through the eyes of our omniscient narrator, we look at the immensity of human insignificance as he meditates on beauty, goodness, environment, the cosmos, and our miserable attempts at religion. Sartori's deliciously absurd humor is magnificently translated by Frederica Randall, who catches his mocking voice with great ingenuity, delivering well-honed one-liners with impeccable timing and all the skill of a stand-up comic. Perhaps that skill in translating both humor and absurdity, two sides of the same coin, was an especially useful asset in her work as a political journalist. She wrote about her own work as a translator, quote, I like to work on fiction and nonfiction that's just this side of untranslatable. Books that challenge what non-Italians know about Italian life, or challenge what we think constitutes a memoir, a novel, a work of history, unquote. It is tempting to see her translation work as a continuation of journalism by other means, in the aftermath of her death on May 12th. The nation published an appreciation of her work as the paper's, quote, longtime Rome correspondent, a mordantly funny, never in the least dispassionate observer, an acute chronicler of the post-war death spiral of Italian democracy, unquote. Frederica Randall covered Italy a country that's just this side of untranslatable, as a journalist and as a translator. Translation being a form of journalism and journalism being a form of translation. She did both with great and uncommon mastery. And here is an excerpt from I Am God. God is not the sleepy old fart that many believers imagine. Let's get that straight. He likes to keep up with what's going on in the cosmos. He intervenes when he needs to, although intervention doesn't necessarily mean throwing a giant tantrum or staging a biblical scale massacre. There are also moments, and these can go on for several million years, during which he just loafs around in his, as it were, slippers. Mostly when nothing much is happening, when the stars are living out their adamantine life cycles, the galaxies, evolving as galaxies will, and even on the subatomic level, all is going according to plan. When trying as hard as I might to come up with something to do, I can think of nothing that can't be done tomorrow. I won't say I sleep, God never sleeps, but my condition isn't much different from that of a bear in hibernation or a brumating snake. Let's just say I take things easy. But then, bang, everything shifts, and suddenly I have a thousand pestiferous problems to resolve, millions of things to look after. Rush over here, race over there, put out that, dam up this, patch up the other. I can barely keep on top of it all. And things have gotten distinctly worse since that appalling bungler, Homo sapiens, started making all kinds of trouble. War, epidemics, slaughter, genocide, annihilation. Not only collective disasters, but a myriad of individual emergencies. 
women starving to death, children mistreated, children put in terrible danger and subjected to agonizing torture. Nine billion individuals, no matter how irresponsible they are, are still nine billion in need of a hand. Sometimes I feel more like a social worker than God, hardly that high-handed hot head the Bible talks about. And now we will hear from Frederica Randall's son, Tommaso Yuker. My name is Tommaso Yuker. I'm Frederica Randall's son. Um, I'm speaking today on, on her behalf because very sadly she, she passed away uh, earlier this year in May and so can't be with us to, to celebrate this, this wonderful award. Um, I wanted to start by just simply thanking everyone involved in, in this process. It's, I, I'm really grateful to, to have this platform to just say a few words uh, on, the, on my behalf and also on my, on my father's behalf. Um, we're, we're extremely pleased that, that obviously that, that my mother's received this award. Uh, it's, a, it's a huge honor and, and a great way for us to remember her and her, and her work. Um, my, my mother would have obviously been over the moon to receive this, uh, this prize, but at the same time, uh, she had a, uh, she had a fear of, of public speaking. And so I think in some way she, she wouldn't be too displeased about the fact that I get to give this, this small, uh, sort of speech on, on, on her behalf. Um, when I, when I started thinking about what I might want to say, uh, to you in these short few minutes, I, I started thinking about my my mother, the translator, um, and I realized that when I did that, I couldn't actually uh, that the thought of my mom as a translator didn't immediately come to me, uh, and that's partly because I, in a professional sphere, I immediately think of my mother as my mother, the, the journalist, uh, and that's what she was for to me and to everyone for for many years, uh, reporting on uh, the latest and most exciting. Uh, art and literary trends in 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 the world, and particularly Italy, uh, attending the Biennale di Venezia every every year, um, and it, it was only later in her life that she really got involved and interested in translating. And part of that was sparked by a really a, a tragic and sad accident that she suffered about fifteen years ago, which made it much harder for her to move around. But uh, my mother really saw the silver lining to that, and she the translation be, sort of became a vehicle for her to escape that uh, that 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 whole uh, thing, this whole event that happened to her. Um, and so she she became more and more interested in translation during the years. And I think what what she really appreciated about it was the the challenge. Uh, so she she obviously liked the challenge of finding the right way to represent someone else's. Uh, words uh, when when going from one language to the other, so not just the literal translation of words, but also what what the the the, the actual meaning of them uh, in the in the in the original language, uh, and this was something that she was immensely talented at, at doing. But the the other part of the challenge for her was actually finding those those hidden gems, those those books that or, or pieces that no one else had thought or or bothered to to, to translate previously. Um, and uh, and that that I think drove her just as much as the the actual perfectionist in her in trying to sort of get the get the translation just right. Um, and so Giacomo Sartori's uh, "I Am God" fits that perfectly. It was it was it was something she was immensely proud of having found, and she she saw value in immediately and felt that everyone else should should as well. So really poured her heart and soul into 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 translating the book and also promoting it and trying to. Uh, get it out there, um, and so I think this this award is is immensely fitting for for her to receive this award for for that for that particular translation, um, and I just hope that you enjoy reading the the book just as much as she enjoyed translating it. <laughs> 